On my mobile phone, I have an app called What Three Words. What Three Words has divided the world into three metre squares and given each one a unique three word address. Three words that will give you my location at any given time. Most usually in these restricted days, adhesives holdings toddler, my manse in Melrose. Let me give you three words that I think describe where we are as a church, the times we are in. Tension, challenge, opportunity. So how did I arrive at these particular words? In the past month, I have been reading Rewilding the Church by Steve Athorpe, one of the Faith Nurture Forum's mission development workers. I've also been helping develop the new legislation being presented in our supplementary report, the Presbytery Mission Plan Act and the local mission church regulations. Rewilding is a radical strategy from ecology and environmentalism that allows natural forces to take the driving seat. Steve explores what might happen if this was applied to the church, a church mired with wearisome bureaucracy, under pressure to keep things going. He uses Walter Brueggemann's wonderful description of God. The one we follow is wild, dangerous, unfettered and free. He speaks of the need to reignite a passion for living wholeheartedly for him, to refocus on following Jesus, to breathe new life into dry bones, to keep it simple, to travel light. Now, an act of the General Assembly may seem to many like wearisome bureaucracy, the work of the Clerks and Legal Questions Committee, with all the drafting and redrafting, the detail, the minutiae, the complexity. And so it would appear that these two pieces of work are at complete odds with one another, but they're not. What they have in common is that both speak of tension, challenge, opportunity. Indeed, both act as tension, challenge and opportunity to each other. We're holding so much of our church life in tension, particularly in these the strangest of days. Many of us are feeling tired and overwhelmed and jaded. Whilst the Faith Action Plan speaks of the need for enthusiastic and inspirational leaders. There's a desire, a pressure to get back to the way we were, the familiar and comfortable, rather than to continue to engage with our lockdown learnings and experiences, the new possibilities. We're in the middle of presbytery reform. The move from our smaller, old presbyteries to a new and very different presbytery structure. Again, the tension between the familiar and the unfamiliar, the old and the new. The tension between what we resource nationally and what we resource regionally and locally and how we pay for it. The tension between wearisome bureaucracy and keeping the show on the road. And what we are learning on the forum, the need to be nimble and fleet of foot, to travel light and get rid of a lot of the baggage. These are just some of the tensions. So what about the challenges? We cannot underestimate the challenges ahead. Let me give you some facts. At the end of March, we had 685 ministers in post, 151 locums, 106 ministries development staff, MDS, 299 vacant congregations, 36 congregations in guardianship, and therefore the need for 335 interim moderators. We are 
at breaking point. Every commissioner, every person viewing this assembly knows in their heart that we cannot afford to carry and pay for all these vacancies. They are draining the resources of the church. People, morale, finance. And I'm not going to mention buildings. I'll leave that to our colleagues in the general trustees. We also know that looming ahead of us, we have a retirement cliff. Over 35% of our ministers either have reached or will reach 65 in less than five years. Along with the Assembly trustees, we've been doing work on ministry numbers, the number of ministries we can afford, full-time ministers of Word and Sacrament and MDS. As they report, 600 plus 60 vacancies to enable movement in the system by 2025, a leaner, more nimble structure. In our supplementary report, you'll find the table giving the allocation of posts for each presbytery and the explanation of how we arrived at these numbers. It makes for challenging reading. And all the more so given the short time frame we've indicated for this work on presbytery plans to be done. Here are some of the other related challenges we're facing. Reimagining the church. How we continue to show our commitment to the poorest and most marginalised. That need for inspirational leadership. Continued rethinking of training for ministry that fits our candidates for the change demands of ministry today, but also resources them to be flexible for ministry tomorrow and beyond. Resourcing the local church, how and for what. And I'm so grateful to the members of the forum and all the staff in the national offices who are rising to these challenges. My third word is opportunity. Both rewilding the church and the Presbytery Mission Plan Act present us with opportunities to be imaginative and creative. It's a mission plan. It's about mission first and foremost. So here's the question that underpins everything we do. What is the vision for mission in your congregation, in your presbytery? You could use the five marks of mission as a catalyst for discussion. How do you, how could you proclaim the good news of the kingdom? Teach, baptise and nurture new believers. Respond to human need by loving service. Transform unjust structures of society. Safeguard the integrity of creation. How do you? How could you? Who with? What are the possibilities? What are the opportunities? 600 ministries plus 60 vacancies does not determine the number of congregations in a presbytery. And here's where we have opportunity to be creative. To plan creatively, we need the tools. The new Act provides the legislation to enable this. It's permissive, not restrictive. It envisages a mixed economy of full-time ministers of word and sacrament, deacons, ordained local ministers, MDS, readers, and lay involvement, in person and online. Team working, a sharing of talents, the stronger helping the weaker. This has always been the greatest strength in our Presbyterian structure. The work of the Faith Nurture Forum is all about resourcing the local. And the local exists for the people God wants to bless through the church. 
In our report, you'll read about our work on discipleship, the lay training programme, and talking ministry. The support and encouragement and resources offered by Ascend, by those involved in children, youth and family work, by our priority areas team. As a forum, butterflies have been our metaphor for change. Continuing that theme, you can only fly once you're willing to give up the safety of your cocoon. Tension, challenge, opportunity. We live within the tensions. We acknowledge the enormity of the challenges. We seek God's guiding as we grasp the opportunities. <laughs>